Well, good morning, saints. It's good to be with you today. Pastor Mercer here with you uh, for your devotion for January, January 30th, January 30th. Our psalm for today is Psalm 33. Our uh, reading in the New Testament, reading New Testament reading today is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm, 30, Psalm 33, uh, verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, for our heart is glad in him, because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. You know, when we hear that, when we hear the blessing, the ironic blessing, when you think about that, we kind of find that in here, that, uh, you know, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. We pray that his face would always be on us, and he, he does that. He doesn't turn away from us, but we are his people and he keeps his watchful eye upon us. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 with me, if you would. <clears throat> you then, my child, being strengthened by the grace that it is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound, Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faith faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel, a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So, flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they may breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, 
patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his word. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, so I, I think the centerpiece of this is when Paul says this, Remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. And then he goes on to tell young Timothy here uh, uh, how he should present himself to God as one approved, one who is a follower of Christ and need not be shamed, uh, rightly handling the word of, of truth. I like this, how he tells him in there to, to avoid irreverent babble, these quarrels about, um, uh, you know, how, how easily, dear saints, we can even find ourselves uh, caught up in, in a controversy, something that we find um, in, 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 in God's word, and how easily it is to, to, uh, to twist and to turn. You know, Paul goes on with Timothy, Timothy as, we'll, as we'll see here over the next few days, how important it is. And it's a reminder to you and me how important it is for us to stay in his word, to know his word. For there are false teachers that will come along and they're going to spread uh, their ungodliness, their, their lies, like gangrene, he says. And he names these two people that are involved in this as well. And they were preaching that the resurrection had already come. The last day had already, had already occurred. Um, and so, uh, you know, with those kind of things and, and the false teachings, we know that this will upset the faith of some. It's a reminder here, too, that uh, we need to be patient with those uh, as we... As, as, he, as Paul st- be, uh, also tells Timothy here to be, um, have nothing to do with these foolish, ignorant controversies and quarrels and all of these things. But he says, what are we to do? We are to be kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, he says, correcting opponents with gentleness. This is... This is, uh, when, when we do that, we are living out Christ's love then with our brothers and sisters. Um, and we, we show this love through endurance and patience, how Christ, we, can, we cannot overlook the fact that how Christ was patient with us and loved us and gave himself up for us and continues to love his church, even as Paul also said here, that um, he cannot deny us. He can never deny us, even when we are unfaithful. Uh, he, when we are faithless, he says, he remains faithful, for, for God cannot deny himself, because this is who he is. He is faithful, he is just, he is merciful, and his grace is, is uh, boundless. He continues to love us, and he continues to forgive us our sins. All right. When I was looking at this reading today, this particular reading, it took me to um, the third article. And I think that as we talk about the next few readings here in Timothy, this ties into this. Well, we know that the third article is sanctification, which speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit. And in the second article of the explanation here, it says this. Uh, in the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Well, dear saints, how does the Holy Spirit do this? He calls us. We hear the gospel preached in our ears. We hear the word. It, it calls us. We remain in his word. We remain faithful to his word. But this is not something that we're doing, but this is the work of the Holy Spirit in us that continues to drive us back to God's word and to his truth. Well, shall we pray? 
O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that we ask in faith, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, I hope you're having a a, a good day, good start to your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow.